So let's learn how to declare constants for tables. We will create database tables and its versions and its column. I mean, let's declare constants for tables. We will create the database name, database table, and database versions programmatically. And we will also create the columns of the tables inside the Android Studio. All of the constants should be private, static, final. You can use public if you want to use these constants anywhere inside your code. And we will use teacher database version. I assign it to one. Always assign one. And if you want to change the schema, use the sequence number like one, two, three, and four. Do not use the old or the same database versions that you have used for your older schema. And after that, create private static final string database name. So inside the double code, write your database name. Write your database name and pass its extension like .db. If you do not pass the .db extension in here, the SQLite Open Helper will do this for you. And after that, create the table name which is word entry and this also should be private static final string if you do not declare constants for your tables and if you do not use private static final you only use a string data type or integer data type for your tables column your app will crash and will not work so after you have created the database version and database name and table name now it's time to create the constants for tables you can create the key id and assign it the value of id in android if you want to choose a column as unique or primary key make sure that you use this format it is a convention in android if you use a column unique or primary key if you want to choose a column for primary key use this format underscore id and another column is word and this also should be public static final string and public in here is not necessary you can also use private if you want but if you use private only you access this static variable inside the class you cannot use it outside the scope of the class if you want to use this keyword or column name outside the scope of the class make sure that you use the public access modifier and after that create a string array of columns and pass its column as column array we will also learn what is the meaning of this line of code so let's go ahead for that and stick to our plan so let's define the query for creating our database in the previous slide we have learned how to create the constants for our database how to create the database version database name table names and column names so now let's write a query to create our database customarily define your query as public static final and after that inside the string variable write the sql syntax like create table word list table word list table is nothing but it is the variable that we have created in the previous slide as you can see so this is the word list table which it has the value of word entry so this is the name of our table word entry and we assign it to word list table and we use this variable inside in here here, okay you can also write query really like create table name of your table but I use it dynamically whenever I change the table value in here so it automatically changes in here so it is a dynamic way of writing code and after that open the bracket and write the variables that you have declared in the previous key ID is nothing but it is also the variable that we have created here and also keyword column if you can see it is the keyword column and after that specify the type of data that you want to store in this column as the name of key id so i want to store integer and it is the primary key of our column and also write auto increment if you want this id should be incremented each time when i insert a new row to our table if you want to insert text data into the keyword column under the keyword column so you specify the type as text or worker like this one and pass its type as 285 character so this is the query for the creating our tables schema schema is nothing but it is the name of the table database name column names fields data that we have stored inside that table when you extend your class from the sqlite open helper which is abstract class and it has two abstract methods you must implement them one is on create method this on create method will create your database first and then create your tables you don't need to worry where to call this on create method because android will do this for you and it has an object of sqlite database and by using this sqlite object which is db 
we call the execute SQL and we will pass the variable of our query that we have declared in the previous slide. If you can see, we have named this string as the name of wordless table create, which it has some values inside this and we will pass that variable of a string in here. So this will create our database for us and after that, the exec SQL will create our table inside the database of SQLite. You can also add additional data in here if you want to add initial data to your tables after it has been created by Android operating system. So you can also add initial data after that. So this is the way that we will deal with on create method. The next one is on upgrade method which is also a abstract method inside SQLite Open Helper. You must also implement this method. And this method gets called when you change the schema of your table and it passes you three parameters the first one is the reference to the database the older version of your database and the new version you can also save your data in here because it will destroy the table alongside its data. If those data are not used anymore, so you can delete them. If you, those data are valuable and you want to use them later, so you can save them in here. And after that, call the db.execsql and pass the parameters. Like drop table if exists, word table. So this method will drop your database if it exists. So make sure that you always use the SQL operation inside the try and catch block. After that, you must call the onCreate method again and pass the the db object which is in here this will again call the on create method and will create the table for you so you can see the concept of dynamically writing code so these are some database operations that you need to learn the query method which will use to return the data from the databases table you can also specify conditions inside the parameters of query we will also learn in the upcoming slides and the on insert method will be used to insert the data to the table and on update will be used to update the data and on delete will be used to delete the data from the table based on the condition that we pass the parameter of delete method. So let's learn in details about these methods. So first let's talk about the query method. Executing queries for you, I mean create the object open helper class by using that object you must call the query which is inside our SQLite open helper class and after that this query method takes some parameters and return any data type that your user interface needs based on the Foundation that you passed in the parameter of your query method and it only support the queries that your app needs in order to process them so in order of convenience you must use the database methods for inserting deleting and update so there are two ways to return the data from the databases table the first one is raw query and the second one is query use raw query and the data is under your control and supply only by your app demonstrate you by a nice example notepad if i write deep the right query and then in here i create another string SQL query if I pass something like this select ID name from your table name in here when you put a semicolon here and when you write another query so this is considered as two operations first it select that your ID and name from the table and after the semicolon and execute another query write something like this drop table if exists and your table name so that's why you must not raw query the data is not under your control so first it will get the data name and id from your table name and after the semicolon which is consider these as a separate sql operations after you have gained the id and name from your table then it will drop the table from your database and if the data is not under your control so you can use the query method you can use the query method and pass the parameter because this method is used for all other queries as a developer i recommend you to use this method instead of raw query method although they are meant for the same purpose of returning data from your databases table but this is more secure than raw query i mean query method is way securer than raw query method so let's learn the format of raw query method and also learn the format of query method which is in this slide we'll also learn that the first parameter is sql operations the next one is the selection arcs it is nothing but the we are conditions if you want to get the data based on some condition you write the columns that you want to get from the table if you want to get these columns or data based on some conditions so you can pass them in here we will also learn how to use we are cloud inside the raw query in the next video first parameter is sqlite query which is a string second parameter contains the argument that you want to get those data based on the 
conditions that you have set in here. You must only use this raw method if your data is supplied by app and is under your full control. So this is how we write the query for our raw query method. So this is an example like select all from word list table which is nothing your table name and you can order those data in the format you want from the word list table by using the order by and shuffle your data by ascending or descending. You can also pass limit to limit the number of rows from the database table that which is returned by the raw query method. You can see in here my readable is nothing which is our DB object called the raw query method pass the query string which we have created in here and pass null if you don't want to get a data based on the conditions that you want to specify. If you don't want any condition to be made in order to return the result based on that condition so you can pass null in here and it returns you the subset of your table as a cursor and store them inside a cursor variable. Now it's time to learn how to return data by using the query format which is a recommended way that Android and I recommend you to use it for returning data from databases table. The first parameter is the name of your table and the second parameter is the array of columns. How many columns you want to be stored from that table so you can specify inside an array of a string and pass it in here. And if you want to get those columns based on some selection or we are club you can also use selection for the data to be returned based on a condition and the selection org is nothing but it is the argument for this selection we will also learn how to use them if these things are looking trickier for you don't worry too much about it we will cover this in the next video as a practical we will work out a nice examples how to use them in real life example you can also sort them by group by having order by and limit so these are the parameters that you need to pass to the query method in order to return you the subset of the table as a cursor. So this is how we can create the parameters for the query method. First one, specify which columns you want. I want only keywords. So pass that column inside the array of a string as the name of column. And if you want to get this column based on the conditions, create another variable and name it where or you can name it anything you want. And pass the keyword you want to specify in here like this question mark. This question mark is nothing but it is called a placeholder which we will use it in the selection argument of our query method. If you want to get the data based on some SQL format so you can use the SQL format to get your data based on the condition and after that pass the searching a string variable to the string of array which is our we are class and based on this condition we will get our data and after that call the query method with the DB object first pass the table name the columns that you want to be returned from the table when certain conditions are met based on the where argument and you can also use the group by having and limit in here and if, and if you don't want to use them so you can also pass now it's also Okay, so now let's learn how to insert, delete, and update and count the data which have been returned by the raw query and query method from the databases table. So this is the format of it. insert. Insert method is used to insert the data to the database table and it returns you the ID of the row that you have set its data. First, specify the table name. Null column hack is nothing but if you want to insert null data in the databases table, so you can specify which column you want to save or insert null data to it. If you don't want to insert null data in the database table so you can pass null in here if you want and after that pass the content value as you have learned that about the content values in the previous slide how to use the content values and how to store our data inside the content value content values again which, which is nothing it stores your data as a key value pair it maps your data alongside a key key is nothing but you must specify the column name as a key and pass the data so you also you can read it for yourself first argument the table name second argument is string null column hat workaround that allows you to insert empty row if you don't want to insert empty row into the table row so you can use null when you use null you cannot insert null values into the table row third argument map content value with the values for the row when the operation has been gone successfully the insert method will return you the id of the newly inserted row from the table row this is the example of insert method you can call this insert method by using Using the database object first one is your table name if you don't want to insert null values into the table row so you can pass null if you want to pass null values into the table row so you must specify which column you want to insert null to them or do they support null or not and after that pass the content values object in here which it holds your data as a key value pair so this is the delete format method first specify the table name we are close and the data for this we are close which is nothing but the argument for you we are clause method. In the next slide, we will learn how to use the we are class 
class and how to use the we are argument. First argument is table name, second argument is we are class, and the third argument are arguments to we are class. So let's learn how we format the delayed method. So in here, an example of delayed method, you call the delayed method, you pass your table name, so you can specify, as you have learned, the MySQL delayed from table, if I demonstrate you inside the notepad, so you can learn them. So this is the SQL format like delayed from, now specify your table name, your table name in here, delayed from table, where ID or name equals to something like this. And here you specify the column and after that specify the placeholder. This question mark is nothing but it is a placeholder that, that we will pass the data to it. It is a substitution for this ID. So the second argument is the value for this placeholder. If you don't want to use placeholder and if you don't want to use the second argument, so you can also say where key ID equal in here, put the comma, concatenate and ID, concatenate, double quote and single quote. If it's still these things look con confusing for you don't worry too much about it we will work up a nice example about the delayed method all so the update format is something like this and if the data update is successfully it returns you a value which is greater than zero and if the data deleted successfully it returns you a value which is greater than zero the first argument is your table name which is this one the second argument must be content value with new value for row okay and the third argument is we are class which is in here and the fourth argument or the arguments to the we are Class. Fourth argument hold the ID for the we are class if you use the placeholder. So this is an example of update method. I created an object as the name of values which is of type content values and I call the constructor to initialize it. And after that I call the put method with the value and pass the column name and pass the data to it. Which it map this data with this column name. And call the update method, pass the table name and in here pass the value, new value to insert to the table row. So if the ID was equal to question mark which is nothing but substitution for this id which key id equals to this id the fourth argument so as a good developer i also recommend you that always put your database operations inside try catch block if you want to insert if you want to delay or even if you want to close the database connection always validate user input and sql query so listen and share our open helper class create an instance of open helper inside the main activity and the own create method like my db equals to wordless open helper and pass the content make sure that you initialize the open helper class inside your main activity and inside the on create method because on create method gets called one and you must initialize your instances inside this method so let's start working with the database so this is the architecture with the sqli database you have database in here and if you want to get the data from this database and put them inside the recycler view so you must implement a class which extends from sqli open helper and create another class as the name of adopter with this class deal with putting the data to the recycler view and getting the data from the recycler view and, and put those data inside the SQLI database so this is the architecture of SQLI database this is how whenever you want to initialize your recycler view you must consider these architecture in your mind so let's talk about transaction when to use transaction as you know the transaction is nothing but it is a sequence of a step or a logical sequence of a step that they need to be executed completely or not at all we can use transactions when we want to perform multiple operations that all need to be completed fully or not at all to keep the database consistent so this is the situation if you want to use the transaction we use transactions if we want to insert multiple rows to the column and those multiple operations are dependent to one another and you want to ensure yourself that each of these operations are run successfully so you must use transactions if these operations i mean half of them have been completed completed or half of them are inserted into the table's row and half of them are still in the way. During this time there may be a crash or there may be a power failure or there may be an operating system failure that avoids the insertion to the table's row. So you want to insert these multiple operations at one and completely. So that's why you must use transactions for this purpose. If you want to use transactions and you want to insert multiple rows first you must call the db.begin transaction to begin the transaction for your query and inside the try 
can write the multiple operations or insert delayed operations that you want to do with database table and after that call the set transaction successful method to successfully commit your chain to the table and if it runs successfully it returns some values for you you can check it and after you have done with that inside the finally statement call the end transaction to end the transaction for you and release the resources so what's next practical we will work out a nice example about SQLite database and SQLite or SQLite open helper in Android Studio because it is a lightweight database which is embedded inside the Android operating system now remember at this point if things look a little tricky about this exactly what's going on and how things are working don't worry too much about it we will jump to Android Studio and we will make this simple app and try to understand exactly how databases work and how this on create and when the on upgrade meter are triggered we'll catch you guys in the next video where we will talk about how to make the eschema in android studio thank you for watching and be sure to subscribe because more incredible content is on the way if you're new to this channel make sure you subscribe us and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below this video and support us in any way you can and feel free to share this video with anyone and if you do like this video make sure you give us a thumbs up and leave us your thoughts in the comment boxes below i will try to answer them asap so have fun learning peace out see you guys in the next video